up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision It's really nice to have you guys join us here today. I am so excited because we're learning about God and how great He is and how mighty He is and how awesome He is. And guys, how about you join me and let's do some dancing. Stand up, 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 up. Get some space around you because we're going to be dancing to this amazing song. Up, up. He sent a flood and made everything new. He parted the sea and let His people walk through. Big 
stand so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do Though we are sinners, He still gave us worth God sent His Son to live here on the earth He healed the sick, He made blind men see He let the lame walk and He set the world free that you enjoyed yourself and that you had an amazing time. We had such an amazing time here dancing with Mr. Elephant and learning that Jesus is one way, he's the way, he's the truth and the life. And you know what guys, that reminds me of what we've been looking at. The past few weeks we've been looking at who God is and the first day we looked at God is there. A is for Almighty, yes, Almighty. He's all powerful. He holds the whole world in His hands. And then after that, we looked at God being the B. B stands for beginning and the end. Last week, we looked at God is the creator. Do you remember that? Yes, God is the creator. And today, we're going to look at the fourth thing, letter D, which is God is our direction so you repeat after me and say god is my direction guys i'm louder than you say god is my direction awesome god is our direction and we're looking at we've just sung the song that says that jesus is the way the truth and the life so what does it mean that god is my direction what do you think it means so for example when you want to go somewhere and you don't know the way to that place what do you use Long time ago, well, people used to use a compass. Some people used to use some sort of maps and you have to draw your way. And do you know the direction points? We have north, south, east, west. And sometimes you have to try and figure out what side is north, what side is south, what side is east, and what side is west. So just before we talk more about directions, how about you guys at home stand up and we're gonna play a small game so when i say north we're gonna move in front when i say south you move behind when i say east you move to your left side and when i say west you move to your right side are you guys ready remember north in front south behind east left um west right but now do as i say but try not to do as i do we'll first do it together and then we'll try and see if you guys can keep up are you ready so you're gonna jump all right so north north south south east east west okay 
good job. You guys are really doing a good job. So how about now you do what I'm saying, but not what I'm doing. For example, north. I saw you guys moving. North is in front. It's not on the side, right? Okay, let's try it again. North, east. East is that side, not this side, guys. All right, let's do it again. North, east. <laughs> South, west. North, north, I'm seeing you guys, yeah? So we have north, we have east, we have south, we have west. But when we talk about God being our direction, what does that look like? Is it that God is in the north and the south and the east and the west? Maybe it is. But today, what we'd like to look at is one of the stories that helps us understand what it means that God is our direction. And Look at a story of how God guided some of the people in um, some of his people, that is the children of Israel, leaving Egypt and going to the promised land. Let's watch this story together. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt. Ah to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. Uh. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty, and they were mad at Moses, saying, Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. Guys, how cool is that? Imagine a cloud, there being a pillar of cloud guiding you during the day. So as you walk, you're following this cloud. <laughs> that would be funny. And at night, you have a pillar of fire that's leading you. It's not just 
showing you the way it's not just bright at least you don't walk in the darkness but it's there to guide you and to lead you and that's what god did he is a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night to guide the children of israel and you know what there were not two or three children there were thousands of people not just children but people grandpas and kids and granddads and mommies and daddies and there were so so many people but because they followed God's direction he guided them through the wilderness until they got to the promised land so how about you take a few moments at home with whoever you're watching this with to discuss some of the questions that we have my God is so big and so strong and so mighty there's nothing my God cannot do my God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do In the beginning God made everything God simply spoke Wow, all right guys, how about we look at one of the questions from the discussion that you've just had and let's look at the question that, that says, how does God guide us today? So one of the ways that we know that God guides us today is through his word, the Bible. The Bible helps us know where to go, what to do, and not just that. Um, the Bible helps us to know the truth. There are times where we go through spaces where we have to make decisions and we don't know what decision to make or whether to choose to do the right thing or the wrong thing, especially when no one is watching. When we know and when we have God's word, he will direct us. He will guide us to make the right decision or to do the right thing. So one of the ways that God guides us today is through his word. So the more we get to learn his word, the more we are able to understand how God is guiding us to do whatever we're doing. And not just that. God guides us through the people around us, through our parents. He's given us our parents to be there to help us to know the right thing to do in the right way. At school, he's given us our teachers to guide us to do the right thing. So God uses other people to help us so that we know the right, the right places to go, the right things to do. Um, and yes, God is our direction. In the same way that God guided the children of Israel um, through the pillar of cloud and the fire, he will also guide us today. And you know what? The children of Israel had to trust him to know where they are going. In the same way, we need to keep trusting that God knows where we are going and what we are doing. And we can trust that he will guide us in whatever we do. Awesome. So now that leads us to a memory verse that we've been talking about for the past few weeks that helps us know more about God and who, who he is. Do you guys remember the memory verse? It's from the book of Psalm, chapter 85 and verse 15. And it says, You God are good, always kind, almighty, my friend, and full of love. Awesome. So guys, remember that God is kind and he's your friend and he will always be there to guide you in whatever you do. It's craft time! See you in a bit!
All right, guys, so for our craft time today, we're going to be making a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. But here's where it's very, very special. We're not gonna use cotton wool or um, uh, something else that is what we're gonna have to eat our pillar of cloud. So we're going to use marshmallows for our pillar of cloud on this side and different kinds of fruit that have color that can show um, that it's a fire, right? So get your um, strawberries out, watermelon, orange, if you have pineapples, if you have mangoes, that's what we're gonna do. And then we're going to put it up on a skewer like this. And then we're also going to do that on the marshmallows, just like this. Alright guys, I hope that you enjoyed making your marshmallow cloud and your fruit fire. So what I'd like you guys to do, just hold them up right, like this. Don't eat them yet. Let's say a prayer together. So say, dear God, 
please guide me and help me follow your direction. In Jesus' name, put them down, put them down for a minute. Amen. All right, guys, now you can enjoy taking your snack of the marshmallow cloud and the fruit fire. And as you go into the week, remember that God is our direction. He guided the children of Israel using the cloud and the fire. And in the same way, he will guide us today. If we ask him to guide us, he will be our direction and he'll be right there with us. So guys, have an amazing week. Enjoy yourselves. Alrighty, hoping we'll be seeing you next time. Bye. All right, parents, thank you so much for joining us and having this session with your kids. Um, we've had an amazing time. We hope that you also enjoyed this session for today. And for our weekly family time, we have a PDF document that you can download right here so that at least you guys could talk a bit more about how God is our direction and have this conversation with your children throughout the week. We hope that you guys will enjoy doing this and have an amazing week. Till next time. Bye bye. Oh, wait, guys, let me get my friends. Oh, 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 I didn't tell you. So, uh -huh. we're going to be dancing, and then when the music stops, we have to freeze. It's nice. called a freeze and dance. Awesome. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you guys at home ready? Get some space. All right, here we go. My heart was captured, seeing how we captive. Now, because if you got free I feel like dancing I can't did you freeze I tried okay <laughs> <laughs> let's wake the city up I hope you did freeze at home Whoa, good job guys, good job, one more time. I hope you guys got it, well done Esther. Hope